I'm um, going to talk to you a little bit more today about uh, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Um, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit. I mentioned in the first video that there are um, like 14 or 14 different kinds, um, that may be 13. I can't count. Anyway, uh, but I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about what those different types are and what they kind of look like, what's different about them, um, and you know, what differentiates them from the other types of Ehlers Danlos that are out there. So, um, that maybe you might recognize yourself in one of these or just even just the hypermobile type, um, which is, like I said before, it's a clinical diagnosis, uh, which means that there is no test for it. It's just, they go off of your symptoms. Um, and if you had a certain criteria, a number of symptoms, then they give you that diagnosis. Um, the rest of these all have genes that are associated. So you can genetically test for that. Okay, um, the first type I want to talk to you about is called classical. Its main um, things are skin hyperextensibility, um, general joint hypermobility, um, and you can also have some abnormal scarring um, or skin fragility. Okay, less specific, you can also see some like really velvet skin. Um, Malosoid pseudotumors. Um, and sub Q uh, spheroids, which those are just um, like little round nodules underneath your skin that are really hard. They're like calcified. Um, sprains and strains, frequent um, hypotonia, which means that like your muscles are kind of floppy. They don't, um, they don't have the tone that uh, a lot of people have. They're just, um, um, you might also see some gross motor um, delays with that in a child. Um, easily, bruise, easily bruised, um, hernias, prolapses, especially in childhood, um, and sur surgical com complications like hernias, and uh, family history. So uh, the second type is classical-like, and so um, I said second type, uh, which seems like I'm going to count, but I probably will lose count at some point. So, um, but anyway, the second type is classical like, and it's really similar, but, uh, it's got skin hyperextensibility, which means that you can pull your skin and they have actual measurements that they say, okay, if you can pull your skin a certain amount up off of your forearm, um, or off of your hand, uh, that qualifies. Uh, velvety um, skin, but interestingly enough, um, absent is the abnormal scarring that you see with um, classical and hypermobile types. Um, general uh, joint hypermobility, um, also easy to bruise, or even sometimes there's spontaneous bruising um, where your skin is just discolored because of broken blood vessels underneath the skin and you didn't do anything to deserve it. Um, less specific, um, there are some genitourinary or uterine complications that are associated. Um, there's also some facial features that are common for these. And I'm not going to go over each and every single one of these, um, but there are some specific facial features that, that, um, are high, high associated with these. So, for example, this one is lax skin, um, a high palate um, in, the, in the mouth, and a kind of asymmetrical face. There's some cardiovascular issues, and there's also some muscle weakness. So, um, the third one, um, cardiac valvular EDS. Okay, this is not to be confused with um, cardiovascular. This is cardiac valvular EDS. Um, this is severe progressive cardiac valvular problems. So like your mitral valve or your atri um, aortic valve, um, severe and progressive problems with those um, often starts young. Um, skin is also hyperextensible, velvety, the scarring is there, their skin, thin skin, <laughs> easy for me to say, um, and easy bruising. And um, you can have general jo joint hypermobility or you can have just some specific joints. So it doesn't have to be all your joints. 
Um, so vascular EDS, uh, they look for family history. There's usually some arterial rupture at a young age for no discernible reason. Um, sometimes you get a spontaneous sigmoid colon rupture. Um, so the large intestine starts off on the right side, it goes up, it comes across, it goes down on the left side, and then it does kind of a, a U-bend, um, and then it goes out into the rectum to leave the body. Um, that U-bend is the sigmoid colon, and some, so there's a spontaneous rupture um, that they see um, sometimes in vascular EDS. Um, they also see uterine ruptures, especially in the third trimester. Um, so if you think that you might have some sort of EDS, any type, it's really good to get type, typed so that you know if you have vascular or not. Um, and some other ones um, also have the same issue with the uterine ruptures. Um, and this is absent like any kind of C-section, previous C-section or, um, you know, severe... Um, uh, peripartum tears. So any, any like down on your pelvic floor, any tearing there. So, um, it's good to get your, get yourself tested if you're female, um, so that you know if that's an issue for you. Um, so, and also if you're, if you're done with your childbearing years and you have daughters, you might want to get tested so that if they may, they may carry the gene as well and that they might be at risk for that. Um, there's also a carotid cavernous sinus fistula without any trauma. Now this fistula just means uh, it, there's, there's a, a, a connection between two different structures in the body that wouldn't normally be there. And so this happens in the carotid arteries, which are right in here. And that's absent any kind of trauma. So there's no whiplash or anything like that that might, might have caused it, it just kind of appears. Um, the next one is the hypermobile um, EDS, which I talked a lot about in our first video. Um, it's those um, those signs that I talked about, you know, can you overlap? Can you have your thumb out? Um, can you touch the floor with your, your palms? Um, there's there's a, a whole set of criteria um, that you can find on the EDS website. And speaking of which, most of the information that I get is actually from the EDS Society. Um, which is ellers-danlos.org, um, and you can find a lot of that. Um, some of this I also get from a blog that's really great called O Twist, and it um, Twist stands for That's Why I'm So Tired. Uh, so O Twist, oh, that's why I'm so tired, and it's about EDS. And so it's a really great blog. She's um, done a lot of research, and so I get some of my information from there as well. Um, so we, we talked a lot about that in the first video. Um, then there's arthrochalasia uh, EDS. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. It, um, it's, uh, it's either that or arthrochalasia EDS. Um, you find this congenital bilateral, both sides, um, hip dislocations, um, like as a baby, um, severe joint hypermobility general over the whole body. You have skin hyperextensibility. Um, there's some specific facial features. Uh, there's some mild di learning disability. Um, and there can be some seizures or some like others, like some stroke-like symptoms that go along with this and a motor delay um, that are common with this type. Um, there's dermato um, dermato practice. <laughs> these are some of these are really hard to say. <laughs> a der dermato uh, spra spur I and I practice this too. Um, spra it's D E R M A T O S P R A R A X I S E D S. Um, there are nine major and 11 minor criteria. Among them are extreme skin fragility. There are cranial facial characteristics, so facial fe features, um, such as protuberant eyes and really sagging skin. And then there may be a mild delay of um, neurological. 
kyphoscoliotic EDS. Uh, you find um, like loose muscles, um, early onset of kyphoscoliosis. So kyphoscoliosis is not just your normal scoliosis where your, your, your spine bends to the side, but also it bends forward. So a lot of times you'll see one person, a person with, um, you know, one shoulder blade higher than the other. And, um, they also have scoliosis along with it and a rounded forward, um, upper back. Okay. Um, that's the main characteristic of that one. Um, it's usually pretty severe. Um, the skin can be soft and doughy or velvety. It can be fragile with easy bruising. Um, there's also some abnormal healing that goes along with this. Um, and intelligence is usually considered to be in the normal range. There's brittle cornea syndrome, um, where you have thin corneas. Um, you have um, early onset progressive keratoconus or keratoglobus, which basically just means hardening of either the sclera of the, of the eye or um, of the actual orb of the eye. Um, and blue sclera, instead of being whites, whites around the eyes, they have a bluish tinge. Um, then there's um, spondylodysphratic EDS. Um, I'm starting to get tired and my handwriting is bad. Um, but these people have a short stature. They um, have loose muscles and some bowing of the limbs. So they may have like um, bowed legs and bowed arms that aren't quite straight. Um, so that's pretty typical for them. Just a couple more. Hang in there with me. There's musculocontractual EDS. Um, you find contractures, um, multiple like joints, the contractures uh, where they won't uh, extend. They're just um, shorter than they should be. Um, and that's congenital. That starts very early on. There's some facial features. And again, there's um, some skin issues, the hypersensibility, the bruising, the scarring. Um, but in, interestingly enough, this also includes increase in wrinkles in the palm. So uh, there's myopathic EDS. Um, so you have muscle weakness um, and the tone just isn't there. Um, you have proximal joint contractures. So you may have uh, joint contractures up here um, and in your hips and thighs, but you have very hypermobile distal joints, so wrists and ankles, okay? Um, and then there's periodontal the EDS, and it's the very last one. Um, and this is severe intractable uh, periodontal um, issues, um, periodontis, periodontitis, EDS, uh, um, early onset. It's um, so like bleeding gums and like the gingivitis kind of thing. Um, there's a lack of attached gingiva. So again, gingivitis is the, the gums around. So there's the, they, they kind of separate from the teeth. And um, from lots of plaques and then there's the family history. So as you can see, there are a lot of different ways that this can present. So um, if you recognize yourself in any one of these, you might want to um, talk to your doctor and see about getting some genetic testing. Um, and I apologize for taking 14 minutes, um, but I hope you uh, learned a little bit and um, I will see you next visit, which will be what can PT do for me if I have EDS. So, and we'll talk to you then. Thanks.